Hello and welcome to another personal perspective type video, like the one I did with video games in general, the Mario franchise, and most recently Zelda. No. I know I just said at the end of the Zelda video that the next one is going to be on the Dragon Quest Dragon Warrior series, but I since realized Metroid comes first. Yes. I often credit Zelda first game with being the one that saved my video game interest, which it did. Had that game been as open world, or as linear rather, as other Zelda games would be in the passing years, I don't think I'd even still be playing video games today. So there is no doubt that Zelda 1 saved my interest in video gaming, but helped later in that same year in 1988 by this game, the NES original of Metroid. And in this case I stress the NES original, because the remake Zero Mission, while it was a good remake, don't get me wrong, that open world aspect that I love so much about the original was hacked to frick with hand holding, coddling linearity. I mean, Zero Mission is still a good game, don't get me wrong, but why? Why take away one of my favorite parts of well, one of the reasons that I liked the game in the first place the open world exploration aspect? I mean, obviously I'm a bigger fan of open world gaming than I am linear gaming, and that too is a matter of opinion as I've spoken to many people, be it face to face, at work, at school, whatever, over the years, or over the internet they would swear just the opposite way around, that they'd rather have the linear game, so, you know, like anything else in life it works either way, it's a matter of opinion and personal perspective either way, so, you know, to each their own, but for me, I like the open world aspect where no two playthroughs have to be exactly identical. You can always switch things up and do things different with each subsequent playthrough. Like this game. I mean, take this game for example. It's suggested Hideout 1, Kraid's Lair. Hideout 2, Ridley's Lair. So it's suggested that you fight Kraid first and then fight Ridley later, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You can go through Norfair all in one lump playthrough, not have to go through, get an item, come back, like in Zero Mission. You know, yeah. You can fight Ridley first, then go fight Kraid. Can't do that in Zero Mission. So again, while Zero Mission is a good remake, and I'll talk about that when I get to that point in this chronology. But, yeah. At least in that regard, the NES original wins out. Granted, again, there are things about the original that I don't really care too much for. Like I said in my playthrough of it earlier this year when I did that single video three hour long playthrough. You can't crouch and shoot, which you can in Zero Mission. You start off with only 30, or 30 hit points. And most importantly, beam gun weapon upgrades don't stack. You can't have both Ice Beam and Wave Beam which becomes a problem later in the game. So yeah, the original game is great, but it does have its drawbacks as well. But I do like the open exploration, non-linear gameplay, and the fact that you don't have a world map telling you exactly where all the secret power-ups are hidden. Leaving it up to you to find them, at least on a first playthrough. Granted, I've played this game so many times I know where they all are and can find them instantly, but on a first playthrough that's not going to be the case unless you're looking at a screen cap map nowadays. Whereas in Zero Mission you have that in-game map and the little white dot wherever there's a power-up item, missile pack, energy tank, whatever to be found nearby. I mean, an in-game map, like I said in my playthrough of this game earlier this year, an in-game map here would have been nice, don't get me wrong, because on my first playthrough I got lost more times than I care to remember. I'm not even going to pretend to deny that. I'd be lying to myself, much less anybody watching this video. Good God, I got lost in this game so many times. 
But for me, that was the fun of it, finding my way through, not being told where to go, but finding the way through on my own. Anyways, like the first two Zelda games, I already did a first, I already did a full playthrough of this game on my channel, and therefore there's not really much more I can say about this game now that I haven't said already, so... Moving on to the next Metroid game in Chronology Code release order. Released on the original Game Boy in late 1991, Metroid 2. Well, like I said with Link's Awakening, it was on the original Game Boy. Something about that little 2 inch by 2 inch black and white screen always, always gave me a headache if I looked at it for more than an hour or two. So, like Link's Awakening, I didn't play this game for years to come until PC emulation where you could play it on larger screen. So yeah. And once I did, well, to be fair, it's not a bad game, but I wasn't as impressed with this one as I was the first game before it. So much so that I wouldn't play it again until the 3DS remake came out in September of 2017. Then I went back and played this one just out of curiosity to see how much was changed. But for well over a decade, I never touched this game. I mean, that's going to change eventually. I'm going to do a full playthrough of this version of the game from my YouTube channel, but for now... I mean, it is a slight improvement, at least control-wise, over the NES original the first game. I mean, you can crouch and shoot. That's a definite plus right there. You couldn't do that in the NES first game. But, again... Ice Beam, Wave Beam compatibility was lacking, so you could get the Wave Beam, but late in the game you'd have to downgrade it back to the Ice Beam to complete the game, which sucked. Wasn't it? Yeah. And again, no in-game map for, for this game was even worse, because this game's world map is much larger than it was in the first game, therefore you could definitely use one. Since I haven't played this game as many, even counting 3DS Remake, I haven't played this game anywhere near as many times as I played the NES original Metroid. I mean, like I said in my playthrough of Metroid earlier this year, I played the NES original Metroid so many times I have that in-game map memorized. Still to this day, I could replay that game again having the map memorized, not needing to look at it. But for this game, no. So yeah, which is going to make my playthrough of this original version very interesting indeed. Not having much of the map memorized, especially for the later areas. Good God, it's almost going to be a blind-esque playthrough, close to blind. Granted, some of it will resemble the 3DS remake. Of course, these days I play mostly on my 3DS Virtual Console. So I wasn't going to get this game initially, but I figured, hey, I got the first game before it, and the third game to follow it, so I might as well get this game to complete the you know, early Metroid trilogy, if you will. Since I did, I've been playing it a lot. Well, every now and then, I guess I really can't say a lot. And again, it's not atrociously bad, but it's not a favorite either. The only question I find myself asking every time I played this is, it was released in November of 1991, so why in the frick wasn't it on the Super Nintendo, which was already out since August of that very same year? I mean, obvious, yet... Yeah,
sorry, interrupted, lost my chain of thought for a second there, I had to watch my playback to see what the heck I was talking about. As I was saying before being interrupted, this game came out in, no in November of 91, by that time the Super Nintendo was out, so why wasn't this game on the Super Nintendo? Something I always find myself asking. I mean, the, obvious, the answer is obvious, they wanted a major title for the Game Boy, but still, I can't help thinking how much better this game could have been had it been on the Super Nintendo instead. Anyways, again, good game, not one of my favorites in the series, but, yeah, could be worse, I suppose. And I will be doing a playthrough of it for, the, for my YouTube channel sometime either this year or early next year. Anyways, of course, the next Metroid game to be released. <laughs> Sweet. Released on the aforementioned Super Nintendo in April of 1994. Metroid 3 in production order, commonly referred to as Cool. Easily, in my opinion, not only the best Metroid game, but the third best video game in the entire history of video gaming, topped only by Final Fantasy 7 and Ocarina of Time. That's it, that's all. Yeah. Wasn't the first Metroid game I'd played, obviously, if you've been watching this video from the beginning, but just something about it. For one, it took care of the not being able to shoot while crouching. Well, the Game Boy Part 2 did that, but I didn't really get into that game until years later. And it took care of the lack of beam compatibility, so you didn't have to downgrade the wave beam down to the ice beam to complete the game, unlike the first two. Plus it added, like A Link to the Past, what A Link to the Past did for the Zelda franchise, this did for Metroid, adding so much of what's become commonplace in Metroid since. Power bombs, super missiles, gravity suit, superheated hot rooms needing the various suit. So much of what's become common in Metroid started with this game. See. Easily my favorite game on the Super Nintendo with only, like I said in my Zelda video, only A Link to the Past coming close as far as SNES games goes. Played this game shortly after it came out. Loved it ever since. For what, 28 years now? I already did a playthrough of it for my channel, so again, there's not much more I can say now that I didn't throughout the course of that complete playthrough. And like I believe I said towards the end of that playthrough, there wasn't another Metroid game to follow this, not even a remake. No new Metroid games for the next eight years, so as the 90s ended and the new century, new decade began, I used to joke with friends that, oh, even Nintendo knows. They they did as good a Metroid game as they're ever going to do. They stopped making them. They're not even going to try to outdo this one. Of course, we were wrong. And, you know, been many more Metroid games since this, but... But as far as I'm concerned, while there have been more Metroid games since this, none of them are as, as good. And again, like with Ocarina of Time, I don't say that for childhood nostalgia, as I was already in my early 20s by the time this game came out. And it wasn't my first Metroid game, that was the first one. And so, just something about this game got my attention right away, and has kept it ever since. Making it one of the three best games ever made in the entirety of video game history, in my opinion. Of course, like I just said, there wouldn't be another Metroid game for eight full years until November of 2002. Yeah. Yeah. No Metroid game on the N64 for some reason. 
He's making the N64 one of the few Nintendo consoles that, well, actually the Wii U. I mean, yeah, yeah. The Prime Trilogy remake masters on the Wii U, but there were no new new Metroid games on the Wii U, so making the N64 one of the few Nintendo consoles not to have a Metroid game, or at least a new Metroid game for it. Released on the Game Boy Advance in 2002, Metroid 4 in production order, or commonly referred to as Metroid Fusion. Is, well, a bit linear for my liking, but otherwise, pretty good game. One of the better GBA games. would be the last 2D Metroid game. Well, not counting remake of you know, 3DS Samus Returns, not been for Zero Mission long before it. Not counting remakes, the last the last 2D Metroid game until last year's Metroid Dread. I mean again there was the you know the GBA remake of the first game, aka Zero Mission. And more recently than that, the 3DS remake of Part 2, Samus Returns, but yeah. Afterwards, it was the Prime Trilogy, which, you know, Prime 1 being released pretty much the same day as this one was. I tried to get into it as I still had my Game Boy, or Game GameCube, I meant to say at that point in time. I tried to get into it, but... I used to joke with friends that it's not Metroid, it's Doom Troid. Just to me, that's what it felt like, Doom or some first-person shooter game. Just didn't seem like a Metroid game to me. And of course, Metroid Prime is another one of those games like Twilight Princess that I'm open for trying to play through again. You know, like I did with Dragon Warrior 2 NES original earlier this year. To see if, you know, maybe it just wasn't a bad gaming experience that I'm basing an entire opinion on. Wrongly. But for the time being, said playthrough is not going to happen anytime soon, though. Too many games, too little time. But at some point, either from my YouTube channel or just in my own free time, I will try to play through Metroid Prime again. But as of right now, Prime 1, 2, and 3, eh, I can do without. <coughs> Other M, never played that one at all, but from what I've heard, I'm not missing much. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, uh, if I get the chance, I'm going to play it. I'm not going to base my opinion on what other people say about it. If I was going to do that, I wouldn't play Zelda 2 either. Most people I've talked to about Zelda 2 hate that game, so, yeah. Anyways, speaking of remakes... aspects that were never there originally extends out the ending where it originally was a rather short game. Fixes some of the annoyances like having to downgrade the wave feed back to the ice beam. A few other inconsistencies and annoyances of the original. But as I already mentioned in this very same video, also dares to add linearity where it originally was not to be found. Screw you developers. Screw you taking an open world classic and turning it into a linear mockage of it. Screw you developers, screw you. 
But that said again, it is a good remake. Despite its manufactured linear. If I'm being completely honest, it's really hard, like I said in the intro to my playthrough of the NES original Metroid, it's really hard and I almost have to resort to nitpicking to decide which version of the game is truly better, original, or remake. I mean, usually with games, the original, I mean, usually with games, the remake is much better. Samus Returns, Metroid 2... Dragon Quest 7 and 8, 3DS remakes, far superior to the original. But occasionally, Majora's Mask, the original, is still better. Final Fantasy 7, the, re the original, is definitely much better than the remake. Make no mistake about that, in Final Fantasy 7's case, the original is leagues better than the remake. I don't care how many Final Fantasy 7 fans want to argue that point. Your right to your opinion, but my right to strongly disagree with your opinion. Final Fantasy 7 Remake blows ass. Yeah, and there's that boss. Freaking practically gave me a heart attack on my first bike on the game. I saw it as water. Huh. Where the frick did you go? Of course, another good Metroid remake. 3DS Metroid 2. Yeah. Well, in this case, as far as what they call it, the imagining. Loosely based on the original content. So much more added to it and changed, making it much better. Granted, the original is good, but in this case, where it's with the first game, it's a close, tough to make decision which one I like better, the NES original or the Zero Mission remake. In this case, there is no question, no doubt, this 3DS remake is far superior to the Game Boy original. Ridley's theme from Super Metroid. And yes, I know it's been used in other Metroid games since then. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But it originated with Ridley's layer in Super Metroid. And therefore, in my opinion, it will always be Super Metroid. how they play that in every super, every single super heated hot room throughout the entirety of the game. So many times, I'll just put the 3DS down and listen to the Super Metroid music before I actually do anything gameplay wise in those rooms. Hey, cool, Super Metroid music. Sweet. Of course, there's rumors of Metroid Prime 4, well, not really a rumor, it has been confirmed, but then delayed and canceled all right. Now we'll never know when Metroid Prime 4 will finally be released. Last year, of course, Metroid Dread finally came out. And, as much as I hate to say it, I'm not a big, a big fan. I mean, I gripe on the Zelda series for over melting the companion character gimmick, which they definitely have. But in Metroid Dread, they over melt the enemies. I mean, yes, there's only, what, seven or eight of them. But while you're playing through the game, it feels like there's many more of them. Especially when you get to the point where you have to maneuver to avoid the enemy, the 
Emmys while maneuvering underwater without the gravity suit. <coughs> middle fingers, middle fingers, middle fingers, middle fingers. Yeah. So needless to say, I'm not a fan of Metroid Dread. That and the fact that, in my experience, aiming that pulsar cannon, whatever it's called, can be a little wonky and ugh. So yeah. Again, Metroid Dread, I dread playing it. I hate to say that about a 2D Metroid game, but yeah, it comes nowhere near, even remotely close to rivaling Super Nintendo, or Super Metroid rather, or even this game for that matter, a remake. I mean, again, like any opinion in video games, there's always going to be people that will argue that each their own, their right to your opinion, but in my opinion, Metroid Dread is rightfully titled, like I just said a few seconds ago. Yeah, I dread playing it. Disagree if you will, but oh well. And as for Prime 4, well, I still haven't played Prime 1, 2, or 3 yet, so... Still gotta get to that one of these days. But again, the problem being, so many games, so little time, where to begin. So while the first game, first several games, you know, were definitely great, in my opinion, Metroid hasn't been as good since Super Metroid. Fusion was okay, but this game, this version of this was good. Overall, replay the first three games, well, counting this remake of Part 2, a couple hundred times over before I played Red or Anyways, that's my take on the Metroid franchise, such as it's been so far, as of September 24th, 2022, with the release date of Prime 4, still not even nor near confirmed. Frick, at this point, we're not even sure there's ever going to be a Prime 4. I mean, they keep saying it's in development, but it's... How many times can they say it's in development before you start to seriously question if they're not just yanking you, so to speak? Keeping you hyped for a new Metroid game so you'll play the old ones, even though they know full well there's no such thing as a Prime 4. I mean, does anyone else find it ironic how they've never even showed footage of it? I mean, at least with the trailers for Breath of the Wild 2, aka Tears of the Kingdom, they at least showed you some footage of the game to prove that there actually is a game to speak of. Where is the footage for Prime 4? I mean, it was first announced, what, five years ago now? No gameplay footage, no cutscene footage, nothing. So yeah, I'm a bit skeptical that there even really is a Prime 4, that developers aren't just yanking you, so to speak. I mean, I'm probably wrong there and just being paranoid, but, and again, I mean, I'm sure I can't be the only Metroid fan that finds it a bit fishy. Oh, in over five years now, they've never even shown a second, not even a minute fraction of a second, of actually game, actual gameplay footage of this alleged Prime 4. In five years. Of course, again, I digress because I haven't played Prime 1, 2, or 3. It's just the idea of a new Metroid game that hopefully will be better than Red, a game I dread playing. Anyways, once again, 
my opinions on the Metroid series such as it's been so far. And with that, I bid you farewell and thanks for watching if you were. See you next time.